So why did AHNF create their global registry for inherited neuropathy? And it's to try to solve the issue that I was just talking about, where sure, conversation's great, but it doesn't translate into something that can be queried, something that can be looked at in a quantitative structured way. So the type of data that gets shared by the Grin Registry is what's called private data. It's restricted access and it's de-identified. All names and identifying information is stripped from the data. The underlying data is what's important. You could if you've engaged with me on social media, especially about nerve conduction study results, you've heard me time and time again talk about raw data. The raw data is what's important. The raw data is the type of data that's viable for research. It's what gives them just the nuts and bolts that they need for whatever program they might be working with. So biotech and farm need numbers. They need data. They need structured data. One of the ways symptom improvement is gauged in a trial is through natural history. Natural history is looking at something over a long period of time. So a natural history study creates this very large window of symptom data, if you will. And where this comes into play with something like the SOAR trial is investigators and researchers are able to look at not only the individual in the trial, they're able to pull for a much larger history of symptoms and gauge the effectiveness of the drug that they're trying to use to improve symptoms. So the GRIN registry, one of the questions asked is, what's your subtype? When were you diagnosed? And that creates that prevalence rate that researchers just absolutely have to have. The occurrence rate and the prevalence rate becomes very, very important because researchers need a population base, especially for drugs. They have to have people to trial the drugs on it. They don't have a sufficient enough patient population. The trial is not going to be able to come to fruition. And that's where the occurrence and the prevalence rate becomes very, very important. And it can also come into play again, the outcome measures. And then everything combines to advance our understandings of CMT. 